Welcome Grade 12 Mindsetters to our fantastical live shows here at Mindset. Can you believe it? Another whole hour of accounting metrics, yes, because it is very important. So today, Martin's going to take over. It's me, Megan, and Martin today. So I'm so excited. It's the first time I'm here for accounting. It's my first time on a Thursday, so bear with me. I was a little bit rusty for the grade 10 to 12 maths literacy. But now, let me just tell you where you can get all your information. If you want to download the notes, you go to www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra with an X. And I'm going to be on Facebook the whole hour. So it's facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on Twitter, which is at learn extra. And before the ad break, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a secret. Well, I don't think it's much of a secret anymore. But I'm going to have you a little sneak peek. I'll tell you all about it after the first ad break. But for now, let Martin just talk to you about accounting and let me leave you to this. Okay. Go for it, Martin. <laughs> Thank you very much, Megan. And hello, Mindsetters. What we're going to do today is a very important section of your grade 12 syllabus, which is called value added tax. So what we're going to be doing is we're first going to be looking at various theories and concepts that relate to our value added tax, which is something that I'm sure you know about. We've all gone shopping. Every time we go shopping, we have to pay some VAT. We're going to discuss how to calculate that, and then what we're going to do, very important, we're going to discuss how to enter VAT in your various general ledger accounts. So that's the tone of today's lesson. First of all, let's have a look at some of the key concepts that you need to know. What you need to remember is that right now, our value added tax is 14%. Now, it's been that way for quite some time. It could change in the near future, but right now it's 14%. So what that means is that whenever you buy an item on which VAT is levied, they are going to add 14% onto the value of that item. What's also very important is that you need to know your calculations. This, I think, is probably the most important part of your VAT concepts. You need to know how to calculate that if you're given the formulas using inclusive and exclusive amounts. We can give you the numbers including that, or we can give you the numbers excluding that. It's very, very important for you to know how to calculate the VAT when you are given either of those two things. So let's go through that first. Have a look at the formula that I've got here on the board. It says, if you're given the amount excluding VAT, you're given one of the three numbers. You need to calculate either the VAT or you need to calculate the amount including VAT. If you are given the amount excluding VAT and you want to calculate the VAT, what you do is you multiply by this fraction over here, 14 over 100. So if I give you the price of an item excluding VAT and I want to, you to calculate the VAT on that item, very, very easy. You're just going to grab out your calculator and calculate 14% or multiply it by 14 over 100. You can then take that answer and add it to your amount excluding VAT, and that would give you the VAT inclusive price. Or if you want to take a shortcut, if you want to calculate your amount including VAT, very easy, you just take your exclusive VAT amount and you multiply by the fraction 114 over 100. Always remember that the amount excluding that is always less than the amount including that because we're going to add 14% onto the value of the product. Where does that 14% go? Megan, do you know who gets the, the VAT? The VAT from the 14%? Yes. The government? The government gets that. So they get all our cash monies. All our money <laughs> that we pay in VAT is supposed to go to the government, which they then use to create roads, to create schools, to create hospitals, and yes, so on and yeah. so forth. So the calculation can also go the other way. Instead of giving you the amount including that, let's use a different color, we could give you the amount that now includes that. So in other words, the 114% has already been calculated. We've given you the amount after we've added the 14%. Let's say you want to calculate the VAT, then what you would do is you would multiply the answer by 14 over 114. Sorry, I think there's a mistake on the slide here. We've been given the amount including that, so you're going to multiply the amount including that by 14 over 114. And let's say you are given the amount excluding that. 
sorry, you're given the amount including that, and you want to calculate the amount excluding that, very easy, you multiply it by 100 over 114. So quite important, learn those formulas, learn that theory, so that you know what you are given, and you know how to use it to calculate the numbers that you want. We're going to look at some examples of those calculations a little bit later. Now, there's some important theory that you have to learn. So I'm not going to go through these in a lot of detail, but you have to know the difference between zero-rated items and the bat exempt items. That's in your textbook, so just go over that before you write an exam on it. Another very important thing is that certain businesses in South Africa have to register to become VAT vendors. Now, I'm going to throw out a little challenge to those of you that are going to reply to us on Facebook. I'd like to see if you know what the number is. It says here, businesses with a turnover of something or more must register to be VAT vendors. So if you've got a chance, go online and see if you can send us through that number, and I'll tell you later on what that number is. Then there's also a receipts versus an invoice basis of registering for VAT. I'm not going to go through that in detail today, but what you need to make sure that you know in preparation for the final exam is the difference between the receipts basis and the invoice basis. Always remember, though, that most of the questions are going to be where you are registered on the invoice basis. And then, what's very, very important is the difference between our input VAT and our output VAT. And I'm going to go through these two concepts. In a few seconds, I'm going to go to another slide which shows the difference between input and output VAT. But really, what you need to remember is input VAT is VAT that you are allowed to claim back from SARS, whereas output VAT is VAT that you have to pay. But we're going to look at this distinction in a few seconds. Then, finally, what you need to know is the tax period. If you are a business, you need to know that you're going to pay your VAT every two months. So at the end of every two-month period, you are going to fill in a VAT return. That is called a VAT 201 form. I'm sure that some of your teachers have shown you what a form like that looks like, and all businesses that are VAT vendors will need to fill in that VAT 201 form to work out their VAT return for the period. Okay, now let's go and look into some more detail about the two ledger accounts dealing specifically with input VAT and output VAT. These are two very, very important concepts. So you need to make sure, grade 12s, that you understand these concepts clearly. We need to know that input VAT represents the amount that we can claim back from SARS on the items that we have bought. So I'm running a business and I buy various things, or I pay for various services, I'm going to pay that of 14% on most of those. What then happens is, that money I'm allowed to claim back from SARS at the end of the period, because that represents that that I have paid on my inputs. So, therefore, what that means is that input that is an asset. That is very, very important. It is an asset because it represents the money that you are allowed to claim back from SARS at the end of the period. This is very similar to a debtor. A debtor is somebody who owes you money, and we know that debtor's control is also an asset. You will remember that from grade 10 accounting. So, input that is simply the amount of money that SARS owes us, therefore it is an asset. And what's very important as well is that you remember you can only claim this input that back on items that are not exempt from VAT. So you need to go and learn a list of what items are exempt from VAT and what items you can claim input VAT on. If you don't know those distinctions, you're likely to make some mistakes in the exam. And we, when we go through the activity, I'm going to stress that in detail. Also, please be very aware of this little point here. It says input VAT is found in the journals, the CPJ, the CJ, the CIJ, and the PCJ. What do all four of those journals have in common? Very easy. We use these journals when we either buy items, like the CPJ, the CJ, and the PCJ, or when we return items that we have bought. So these journals, when we're dealing with input that, we're interested in items that we have bought, or items that we have returned to creditors. 
So the numbers dealing with input that are going to be found in those four journals. Now output that, of course, is going to be the opposite. If we're looking at output that, output that is the that that we must pay to SARS. So what will happen, I'm a business, I sell some products, and I'm going to collect some money from the customers that have bought from me. Of that money that I collect, 14% will have to go to the government because output that is charged on the items that I sell. So whenever I sell something, I'm going to have to record what part must go to the government from the money that I've collected. So what that means is that output that is a liability. We owe that money to SARS. Where we find the output that is in the journals that we deal with when we are selling things. Remember, I can sell items for cash or I can sell them on credit. If I sell them for cash, my entry will be in the CRJ. If I sell them on credit, my entry will be in the DJ. So these two journals record the value of items that we sell, and because we owe the government the VAT that we have collected on the items that we sell, we will pay it over, and therefore we will find output VAT in these two journals. In the same way, the DAJ is included in output VAT. That is because the DAJ is used when we return, pardon, when a debtor returns items to us that he or she has previously bought from us. So the DAJ also deals with items that we have sold that are now being returned to us. What we therefore need to know is that the DAJ will also deal with output that. One simple way of remembering which one is which, if you look at the word input, you will see that it has five letters, I-N-P-U-T, and we also know that the word asset has five letters. That is an easy way of remembering it. The shorter word, input, has the same number of letters as asset, and we also know that input that will go up on the debit side, because you should know from your accounting equation, assets go up on the debit side and down on the credit side. So we are going to expect input that to have a debit balance. Quite conveniently, the words input, asset, and debit, if you look at them, they all have five letters. So that's an easy way of remembering which one is which. For our output that, we know that the word output has six letters, and so does the word credit, because we're going to expect the balance on output that to be on the credit side of the ledger because it is a liability. And we know that liabilities go up on the credit side. Very, very important for you to know on which side your input that is and on which side your output that is, because you're going to need this information to answer questions in the exam. Just a couple more points that I want to mention here. The business is going to act as a tax collector for SARS. So what would happen when we sell stock, we actually are collecting some VAT on behalf of SARS, and at the end of the two-month period, we're going to send SARS that output VAT. But we're also going to be able to claim back the input VAT that we have originally paid. Also what's important is that there is a third VAT account that you have to know about, which is the VAT control account. You've all seen it in the textbooks. We need to know that the VAT control account is a summary of the input and the output that accounts. So really what's going to happen, at the end of the accounting period, we are going to close off our input VAT and we're going to close off our output VAT to appear on the VAT control account. The main use of this VAT control account is written here for you. We use it to calculate the amount that must be paid to SARS or the amount that can be claimed back from SARS. Very, very easy. Remember, our output VAT is the VAT that we have to pay to SARS. Our input VAT is the VAT that we can claim back from SARS. If our output VAT is greater than our input VAT, it means we owe SARS more than we can claim back. Therefore, at the end of the period, we will send SARS a check. But in the explanation of the task that we're going to do together, you will see how this works. Just remember that you're going to prepare the VAT control account to try and calculate the amount either that SARS owes us or that we owe SARS at the end of the month. Just remember the format of the VAT ledger accounts. Learn those very, very carefully because those are essential in understanding the section. And you're going to need it when you answer questions in the exam. Megan, I think that before we 
Uh, start the question. Yeah. Maybe we should take an ad break. An ad break? You think so? I think so. Okay, cool. No problem. Great twelves. Stay tuned. Go get a glass of water. Jump up and down because this is actually really important to us in everyday life because we deal with it all the time. I promise, all the time. So go have a quick break, and we'll see you afterwards. Okay. Welcome back, grade 12. So remember I told you in the beginning of the show that I had something like sort of a surprise, but not really a surprise to tell you. So it's about a competition that we're running here at Mindset. It's called After Earth, and it's based on the movie that Will and Jaden Smith are in. I don't know, you, have, you must have seen it, please. Like the previews that we've had, if you've tuned into the shows, you must have seen it. But anyway, let me tell you about the competition that's happening. So you and a friend, if you enter, will you enter online at learnextra.co.za forward slash after earth, okay? That's where you enter. And then if I give you the keyword for this show, you write the keyword, then you and your friend could win tickets to go and see the show. I know, very, very exciting. And the keyword for this one hour show is mankind. I'm going to post it on the page as well so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to freak out. You don't know how to spell it. You don't know what the word is. Mankind. Okay. So just go register on that page. That I'll post it also on the Facebook page. And you and your friend could win tickets to go watch it. So I'm going to give you the trailer. Watch the trailer and then I'll see you afterwards. Okay. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or well, we're going to die. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. <laughs> We will survive. I hear something. It has found you. We must abort this mission. You wouldn't give any other ranger that order! You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. Fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. Okay, welcome back, grade 12. So, I know you've watched the trailer. I've given you all the information, so it's up to you. If you want to win those two tickets, please, please go register. LearnExtra.co.za forward slash after earth, where you go and register. Okay, so I'm going to give it to Martin and carry on about value-added tax today, okay? Thank you very much, Megan, and welcome back, Mindsetters. We just had some people answering my question that I threw out to you um, before the break, and many of you gave, there were actually two different answers. Many of you gave the answer 300,000. Okay, unfortunately, 300,000 used to be the right answer, that a business that is registered for that, or a business that has a turnover of 300,000 rand or more, had to be registered as a VAT vendor. What now has happened, though, is that the law has changed in recent years, so actually the correct answer is 1 million rand. So you have to have a turnover of 1 million rand before it is compulsory for you to register as a VAT vendor. But it will appear as 300,000 in some of your textbooks, but that's because they were probably printed before this new law has come in, making it 1, one million. So I'd like to send the congratulations to Princess, who answered hmm. the answer correctly yeah. on the website. So thank you very much. 
Okay, let's have a look at one of the questions that you could expect to get in an exam. Pretty much the question says as follows. It says, use the given information to answer the questions that follow, and we have to draw up the input that and the output that ledger accounts in our answer sheet. So the information is here, and the information says as follows. It says, Pasco Stores, that's our business, is registered for that on the invoice basis. You will get questions where you're doing that on the invoice basis, so that is the one that you need to study. It says that they submit their VAT form every two months as required, and it says that their last submission was dated 31st of May 2012. We've been given some opening balances here. The input VAT balance, and we've been given the output VAT balance. This is something that you need to know so well that you hardly have to think about on which side is input VAT and on which side is output VAT. You need to know these things very well so that when you get into the exam, you see this information, you don't panic at all, you stay cool as a cucumber, and you put the information straight into the ledger accounts. So we'll see here that our input VAT balance is 10,400 Rand. And remember in the notes, I said to you that input VAT balances are on the debit side of the general ledger. Five letters in the word debit, five letters in the word input. So let's go back and put it in. We also know that the output VAT balance is going to go on the credit side because output has got six letters, credit has got six letters. Output VAT is a liability, input VAT is an asset. So if we go over here, we know that VAT input goes up on the debit side and we know that it goes down on the credit side because it's an asset and vice versa for the output VAT. If we see our number here, it's 10,400. So I'm going to just start off with a balance brought down of 10,400 Rand. So our input VAT, in other words, the VAT that SARS owed us at the beginning of the month, so I'll just put the first in there, was 10,400 Rand debit. It's an asset. SARS owes us that money. But at the same time, we also owed SARS some money from the VAT on the items that we've sold. So that was 32,200 Rand, and we need to put that information on the credit side of our output VAT account, 32,200 Rand. And on the first of the month, it's going to be a balance brought down. Now, once we've got these opening balances, we need to look at the transactions that happened for the month, and we need to put them in on the correct side of the ledger. So let's have a look at what's given to us in this question. Here's where it's very important to know your calculations well. You need to know, is something including that, or is something excluding that? So let's have a look at the first transaction. It says here that there was a cash sale of goods which cost 75,000 Rand exclusive, and they were marked up by 50%. What this means is that these goods originally cost us 75,000 Rand. So what they've actually given us here is the cost price of these goods that we have sold. It also says that it was 75,000 exclusive and it was marked up by 50%. So here's where you need to think back to your grade 10 accounting, but it's a calculation that we have to do over and over and over. How do we calculate the selling price of the goods if we are given the cost price. I'm sure you all know the formula. What you do is you take the cost price, you're going to multiply it by 100, and you're going to divide it by 100 plus the markup. That's to get the selling price. So that's what we have to do first. We're not going to charge the customer that on the cost price of the goods. We're going to charge her that on the selling price of the goods because right now we have made a sale. So let me get my calculator up here. We're going to calculate the selling price of the goods using this formula over here. We know that the cost price of the goods is 75,000 Rand, so let me type it in. We also know that we must multiply by 100 according to this formula over here. And we know that we must divide by 100 plus the markup, and the markup in this case is 50%. So what's 100 plus 50? That's an easy one to do in your head. It's 150. If you do that sum, you will get the answer here of 50,000. And I'm terribly sorry, I've made a mistake. 
I'm sure some of you have picked it up on Facebook already. Mm -hmm. I used the wrong formula here. I calculated the cost price instead of the selling price. Of course, if you're using the selling price, you have to flip this over on its head, and you're multiplying by 150 and dividing by 100. So I'm sorry I've made a mistake here. We're actually going to take the 75,000 Rand. Can you see that my answer is wrong? Because we know that the selling price has to be more than the cost price. What we'll do is we're going to multiply it by 150, because we're adding the markup, and we're going to divide it by 100. Terribly sorry, mindsetters. It's an easy mistake to make in an exam. So the actual selling price of these goods is 112,500 Rand. So let's write that down here. 112,500 Rand is actually our selling price, 112,500. Now we know that this is our selling price exclusive of that. Okay, So we haven't taken any of that into account in this question yet. What we have to do now, though, is realize that we are going to put that into our general ledger account. And it's important to realize which that we're going to use. Because it is a sale of goods, you should know that we are going to put it in output that. So the that on this item must go into our output that ledger account. We are going to collect this money from the people that we are selling the items to, and then we're going to pay over the that to the SARS. So what we'll do to calculate how much the VAT is, this amount that we've calculated is the amount excluding VAT. I've circled it there. So if we want to know what the VAT is, we go back to our formulas. We're going to multiply by 14. Now it's very important to know, are we going to divide by 100 or are we going to divide by 114? Remember, if you're given the exclusive amount, you're always going to divide by 100. So the VAT on this item is 15750. We are going to sell this item for 15,750 Rand more, and that amount is the output VAT that we are going to pay over to SARS. So this 15750 is what we have to include in our, in our ledger account. So let me add it here. 15750 is the VAT on this amount which is given to us excluding that. Now, you should know, mindsetters, that this 15750 represents an amount that must be paid over to SARS. So this is a liability to us. If we then therefore go to our answer sheet, we're going to make the entry as follows. It will appear on the credit side of our VAT output as money that we have to pay SARS. So what will happen is we'll put that 15 750 over here. If we are selling items for cash, we are going to make the entry in the cash receipts journal. And if we sell something for cash, where are we going to store our money? In the bank. So this VAT output represents money that we've received in the bank, but that we actually now owe to SARS. So here's our first entry, and the entry should be on the last day of the month. And since the month here is July, we'll need to put the 31st of July. So very important also to know how many days there are in every month. Okay, so that was our first transaction. Calculate the VAT, work out whether it's input or output, and put it on the correct side with a correct entry. You should have in textbooks and in notes that you've done in class a template for input VAT and for output VAT. Learn what goes on what side. Make sure that you understand the input and output VAT clearly. The next transaction here says that we bought goods on credit. Let me just erase some of the things that are here in our way. We bought goods on credit for, from GBY for 120,000 Rand, exclusive of VAT. So right now, we've been given an amount that is exclusive of VAT. And we've bought it on credit. So if we buy things on credit, we know that we're going to make our entry in the creditor's journal. Also, what's important to realize is that these are goods that we have bought. So I've originally bought those items. I can therefore claim back that VAT on those items. Therefore, because it is goods that we've bought, we know that we're dealing here with input VAT. What we must now do is calculate that input VAT. And once again, it's very important to know whether you've got the amount exclusive or inclusive of VAT. 
So this 120,000, we are told that it is exclusive of that. So once again, you need to know your formula. If you are given the amount excluding that, you're going to take the amount, which is 120,000, you're going to multiply it by 14, and again you're going to divide it by 100. You only divide by 114 if the question asks you the number including that. If it gives you the number excluding that, it's just 14 over 100. So the VAT on these items are 16,800 Rand. That 16,800 Rand is money that we have to pay the creditor. 16,800 Rand. 16,800 Rand was charged us on the goods that we bought on credit. However, because we have bought those goods, we can claim back that 16,800 Rand from SARS. So, if you know the format of your ledger accounts, we'll go back to the answer. We need to use the input VAT amount. It was 16,800 Rand. This is money that you can claim back from SARS, so SARS owes it to you. The details will, the date, sorry, will be the 31st of July, and the details will be creditors' control. Why creditors' control? Because this represents the VAT on items that we have bought on credit, and we know that it is our CJ. So that's how we've done the entry that happened on the 7th. The next one said that we wrote a cash check out for stationery for 4560, which was inclusive of that, and we wrote it out for salaries of 12,000. So we paid somebody their salary of 12,000 Rand, or we paid several employees their salary of 12,000, and we paid a cash check for stationery of 4560. Now, there's a small trick in this question here, and you have to understand it very clearly. We've paid for stationery and we've paid for salaries, but it's important to note that the amount for salaries is not a VAT item. Why is it not a VAT item? I wonder if you know the answer. It's not a VAT item because when we earn salaries or when a business pays salaries, they actually pay a different type of tax on that. So maybe I can ask you to tell me what the tax is called that we pay on salaries. You should remember it from grade 10. I'll give you the answer in a few minutes' time. But what's important, though, is when you see salaries, you should know that there's no VAT charged on it, so therefore we cannot claim back the input VAT that we've paid somebody on their salary because no VAT was paid on a person's salary. It was a different type of tax. However, we do pay VAT on stationery. So we're only allowed to, for this transaction, claim back the VAT for stationery. What we would therefore do is we need to calculate only the VAT on the 4560. We're not going to calculate it on the 12,000 because there was no VAT paid on that 12,000 in the first place. So the way we do it, we have to look and see, was it including or excluding VAT? The question tells us that it was inclusive. The amount was given to us VAT inclusive. So now once again, you need to know your formula as well. What will happen is we'll type the amount in 4560. We will again multiply by 14 because we want to calculate the VAT. But we will now not divide by 100, but by 114. The answer that I get comes to 560 Rand. And this 560 Rand has to go into our ledger. Think about where we're going to put this 560 Rand. But I think I need to give you some time to take a break and to think about it. Uh, I think it's time for another ad break. Okay, Martin, if you say so. <laughs> okay, well, Mindsetters, I hope you've enjoyed what we've gone through in this whole, whole show. Don't worry, there's still lots more to come after the break. So don't go anywhere. Keep glued to your seats, and we'll see you straight afterwards. Okay. Welcome back, grade 12s. I hope you had a quick, quick break, jumped up and down, went to get some water, and now you're sitting in front of your television with your notes and listening to what Martin has to say about VAT. So I'm going to give it to Martin, and I'll be with you chatting on the page this whole time. Okay, so ask me any questions, post your comments, and I'll ask Martin to help you. Okay, go for it. Thank you very much, Megan, and well done to those of you that wrote in. I asked you before the break, what was the tax that is charged on the salary of 12,000 Rand. Remember, the answer to that question is pay as you earn. So 
The PAYE tax is charged on salaries. That is why we don't charge VAT on them. VAT is charged on goods and services. Salaries get PAYE. Okay, so before the break, we calculated that the VAT for this transaction was 4,000, uh, pardon, was 560 Rand. That 560 Rand is the VAT on the cash that we have paid for the stationery in this particular example. Remember that I said to you, the VAT on the, on the items that we have bought can be claimed back. So that has to be input VAT, because we have bought the stationery, so we are allowed to claim it back. What you now need to do is you need to go back to your ledger account. That means we have to put that 560 Rand on the debit side of input VAT, 560. And because we paid for this in the bank, it will be CPJ, and the details here are going to be bank. We've paid that VAT, and now we're going to be able to claim it back from items that we have bought from our bank account in the CPJ. Somebody asked during the break, how do you know the format of the ledger accounts? You should look in the textbooks that you have and learn on which side which entry goes. The CJ and the CPJ will go on this side, and the CRJ and the DJ will go on that side. Also then learn where the DAJ goes, also learn where the CAJ goes, and if you know all of those things together, you should have a good understanding of the skeleton and the format of these ledger accounts. If we now go back to the next transaction, it says that we sold goods on credit to C. Brewer. I'm sure all of you will be able to spot this if you think about it carefully. If I sell goods on credit, where am I going to make my entry? I'm going to make it in my DJ. What you should also know about this is that if I'm selling goods to somebody, then I have to pay output that on them. So we know that we're going to deal with the output that account. All we need to do now is calculate how much the output that actually was. And it tells us that there was invoice 235, which totaled 17,670. Megan, I'd like to ask you a question. Okay. If you are, if you are buying something from me on credit, yeah. would I charge you the amount without that, or would I charge you the amount with that? Probably with that. With that, exactly yeah. right. So this 17,670 is shown on the invoice. So what that means is that this debtor is going to have to pay me this amount, including that. This question was a little bit more tricky because they didn't tell us, like in the previous ones, whether it was inclusive or exclusive. But what you have to remember is that if you give a debtor an invoice, the amount must automatically include that if you are a VAT vendor. So let's have a look and use our formula to calculate what the VAT is here. It's 17670 was the VAT inclusive price. I've just explained why, because it appears on the invoice, and you're going to charge the debtor the amount including VAT. So if I want to know what the VAT was, I'm going to have to multiply by what? by 14, but now I'm not going to divide by 100 because that's for exclusive. I'm going to multiply by 114. So the answer comes to 2170. The VAT that we charged that debtor was 2170. But we don't get to keep that money when the debtor pays us. No, we have to pay it over to SARS. So we owe the SARS that 2,170 Rand. Therefore, as we've said before, this 2,170 Rand is actually output that. So let's go to our ledger account. We obviously need to go to the output that ledger account, and we know that it was 2,170. We know that it came from the debtor's journal, and we know that the details in the debtor's journal are going to be debtor's control. So if you look at your that ledger account, it tells us the following things. The VAT output account says that we owed SARS 15750 from money that we sold, from sales that we made for cash. And we also owe SARS 2170 from sales that we made on credit. At the same time, though, we are able to claim back 16,800 from a creditor, and we're also able to claim back 560 from goods that we purchased for cash. So the top one, goods we purchased on credit. The bottom one, goods we purchased from, for cash. We can claim those items back because we've paid that on them. Now we can get our money back. Right, let's look at the next transaction. Our next one says 
that we bought a delivery truck on credit from Tyrant Trucks for 80,000 Rand, exclusive of that. There's a very, very small trick in here that you have to understand. We've bought a delivery truck, and what you need to know is that if you buy a vehicle for business purposes, then you're allowed to claim back the VAT on it. However, if you buy it for your own personal use as a private vehicle and you're not going to make any deliveries or anything else with it in the business, then you cannot claim back the VAT on it. So in this case, what type of truck is it? It is a delivery truck. So we know that we're going to use it in the business. We also know that we bought it on credit and we know that the amount was 80,000 Rand exclusive. Once again, because it is something that we bought, we know that we are able to claim back the VAT that we paid, so we are dealing with input VAT. We also know that we bought it on credit, so the journal in which we would have made the entry is the CJ, because that is where we put items that we've bought on credit. So we now need to calculate the VAT on that item. Let's get the calculator up on the screen again. We see that it was 80,000 Rand excluding VAT, so my calculation is going to be 80,000, and I'm going to multiply by 14, because whenever you want the VAT, you're going to multiply by 14. The trick is to know what you're going to divide by. If you want the amount, if, pardon, if you're given the amount excluding VAT, you have to divide by 100 to get the VAT. So the VAT on this item is 11,200 Rand. As I've said before, that VAT represents VAT that we are allowed to claim back. So what that means is that that is going to be input VAT. Let's go back to our account over here. We're going to put the 11,200 Rand here, 11200, and that was from the creditor's journal, so the details here should be creditor's control. Do you see that we already have an entry at the top here for creditor's control? This was for the other items that we bought, and here it was for the vehicle that we bought. If you like, you can add those two together, or you can show them as separate transactions because they come from the same journal. Let's look at our next one here. The 23rd, the transaction on the 23rd, tells us that we paid for goods from Petty Cash, 57 Rand, that inclusive. So what we've done is we've bought some very small objects out of Petty Cash, we've paid 57 Rand for them, and we know that the question tells us that they are inclusive of that. Once again, every single time we're dealing with items that you have bought, we need to know that that is input VAT. Just like the vehicle that we bought in the previous example, or the previous transaction, that was input VAT because we bought it. In the same way, goods that we have bought for petty cash must be input VAT. So they were 57 Rand VAT inclusive. I'm sure you know by now how to do the calculation. If we want to work out what the VAT was, we're going to take the 57 Rand, we're going to multiply by 14, and because it is inclusive that we've been given, we must divide by 114 and the VAT comes to the grand total of 7 Rand. So we're allowed to claim back 7 Rand in input VAT from those items that we've bought for petty cash. To fill it in the general ledger is not going to be too difficult now. All we'll do is we'll go to the input VAT account, we'll write the amount of 7 Rand on the debit side, and we will write here petty cash, and I'm sure all of you know what the correct journal is that we're dealing with when we use the, PC, the Petty Cash, it's going to be the PCJ or the Petty Cash Journal. Got a few more to do. So this next one is slightly different because it deals with returns. It says here that C. Brewer, this is the person that bought from us in a previous transaction over here. Here's the C. Brewer who bought from us on the 19th. This person was disappointed with the goods they returned goods to the inclusive value of 5130 because they were not according to our sample. So what we're dealing now with now is a debtor who is returning goods to us. What you need to know is that there are usually two ways of dealing with this, and either way is acceptable, and different textbooks use different methods. I like to consider this to be output that, because what's happened is the following. On the day that C. Brewer bought these goods from us, that's on the 19th of this month, 19th of July, here we sold goods on credit to C. Brewer. On that day, we had to record how much VAT we owed SARS for that transaction, and that was output VAT, if you remember. 
But now, what is happening is that he is now returning those goods. So, if he's returned the goods to us, I don't think we need to pay the VAT anymore. And SARS agrees with us. We don't need to pay VAT on goods that we haven't sold. So what we need to do is we need to put this in output VAT, but this is going to go on the opposite side of the ledger because it deals with returns. So what you should remember is either when we return items or when someone returns items to us, we have to cancel out the entry that we made originally when we bought those products. So we have to put the amount on the opposite side of the relevant ledger account. So what it does here is it tells us that he returned goods to the inclusive value of 5130. What we must now do is calculate what the VAT was, and then we're going to decide where we're going to put it. So it was the 5130, and once again, we need to see was it inclusive or exclusive. It was inclusive. Here it is. They've given us the amount including that. So what you need to do is you take your 5130, you're going to multiply by 14, and this time you're going to divide by 114 to get the VAT amount, and the VAT amount was 630 Rand. So if we go to our account, we need to go now to the VAT output account, but to the other side of that account, because now we are not going to pay that VAT over to SARS anymore because the data has returned the stock to us. So we will put the 630 Rand over here. We know that we use a journal called the DAJ whenever a debtor returns stock to us, and then the details here are going to be debtor's control. Because that debtor now no longer owes us that, that money, so therefore we're going to cancel it out because he has returned the goods. So that's where we get that 630 Rand from. We've got another transaction here, which also often happens. This is when the owner withdraws goods. What you need to remember is that when the owner withdraws goods, we are dealing with drawings. And whenever you deal with drawings of stock, you need to know that we're going to put that in output VAT. You could think of it as the owner almost buying the stock from the business because he or she is taking it out of the business. So what then happens is we have to charge output VAT on this item. It's as if you're selling it to the owner. So once again, it says that we've got the VAT of 800 Rand exclusive. So we know that it's exclusive, and if we want to know what the price is, the VAT, uh, the VAT on an exclusive item, we're going to take the 800 Rand, we're going to multiply by 14, but this time we're going to divide by 100 and not 114, because if we divide by 114, we're working out the VAT if we're given VAT inclusive, and right now we've been given VAT exclusive. If you calculate the answer, it comes to 112 Rand. So what we would do now, we have to pay over the VAT to the government on those goods. So what we will do is we'll go to the VAT output. We will put the 112 Rand on the credit side of that account, and this time our details are going to be drawings. Very important as well that you remember that drawings are recorded in the general journal. So there's one more transaction left which deals with bad debts. I'm not going to have time today to finish that transaction, but I'd like to challenge you to, to look in your textbooks and find out how to deal with bad debts and see if you can't complete the journal and work out who owes who money. We'll put the memo up for you to read and for you to look at, and then you can check to see whether you're right. Megan, is there anything you'd like to tell the Yes, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into our accounting show today, Grade 12s. I know Martin had a good time. I know I had a good time. Learned all about VAT. Thank you for watching our show today. I really, really hope you have a good, good, good Friday, and I'll see you next week. Okay.